Twitter. If you're watching on YouTube, hit the subscribe button. If you're listening on the podcast, make sure that you subscribe and that you leave a nice review. We would always appreciate that. Apple Podcasts, that's a big part of their algorithm is reviews and subscriptions. So mm-hmm. knock that out. Again, if you're on YouTube, make sure you comment, hit the like button, hit subscribe. Uh, we, we do a lot of stuff over on YouTube. We've got a, a, a big base over there, and we appreciate all of you guys for jumping in with us. Let's go ahead and jump in. UFC 246 was Saturday night. McGregor KO'd Donald Cerrone, Cowboy Cerrone, in 40 seconds. So, of course, that leaves us with the question of what is next? Uh, both of us watched the fight from, from different locations. Uh, the level of respect, first off, between these two. It, we've, we haven't seen McGregor like this since well before the, the Jose Aldo fight, right? Like back when he was first starting, um, we haven't seen him be as... I don't want to say dialed in because he's been pretty dialed in, but he hasn't, he wasn't a showman for this one. And I don't think he had to be like his name alone brings a lot of clout anyway, but you know, McGregor hugging Cowboy's grandma after the fight, like him hugging Cowboy right after the fight's over. And he has had good sportsmanship before with Diaz and and everybody else uh, other than Habib. But uh, he, this was kind of, not what we expected from his return. Am I right about that? No, I mean, I kind of, I actually kind of did. I, I I know that he, some of his showmanship stuff before the fight is he just doesn't like these guys. Yeah. And he, and he wants to fight them, even though he should, like Diaz, after the fight was over, every time, the one he won, the one he lost, doesn't matter. Um, he always shows good sportsmanship. He always, he always handles himself well when it's over. But leading up to it, he didn't like Diaz. No, and, right. and, and he made it a show, and so much of it is just talking trash about that person, about their crew, um, and, and belittling them and bolstering himself. And, there's, and there's I think really his respect that his, it seemed yeah. like he has like a friendship with, with Cowboy. Now, I don't know how yeah. well these guys actually know each other, but it seemed like there was some type of friendship there. And he went in, he competed, he won, and then it was over. And then when it was over, after he did his hugs and he said his things, then he kind of put the show on afterwards. Yeah. And I think that is a respect thing for Cowboy. And I kind of expected it to be a little more toned down. The The way in um, was super toned down and very friendly compared to what it usually is with him. And, and that's when I kind of had a feeling we're not going to get the Conor McGregor the, the, doing the, the cock walk and the just – kind of in your face guy for this fight. Yeah. You could tell in the way in that just wasn't his MO with well, in, Cowboy. In the, in the press conference. I mean, that, but what can you say negative about Cowboy? I mean, he's he's a legend. Uh, most fights in UFC, most wins in UFC, most finishes, uh, all all that kind of mess. Uh he's got everything. He's he's been around forever and he has always been a class act. Like he he doesn't really talk a lot of trash. Um and he's he's fan, he's a family guy, just like Connor is now. And you know, I, I think there's something to that. Like they both have kids, they both have uh, significant others and whatnot. And they're doing a lot of this, you know, not 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 only for themselves, but also for their families. And Cowboy has never had a, a gigantic payday like this one was. Um, and yeah, I think I think that's a big part of it. Uh, as far as the fight goes, the the shoulder hits by McGregor, I hadn't seen anything like that before. I've never seen anybody do that before. It, it was awesome. And, and when I first saw it, I kind of wondered, is is that a legal hit? Simply because if it's not, why the hell has nobody ever done it? When you see guys get tied up together and they're just kind of, you know, it looks like they're kind of catching their breath because they're exhausted. Yeah. But they're also trying to make sure the other guy can't hit them. Why are you not using your shoulder there? Has nobody just thought to do that? I, th- I wonder if it's a sportsmanship thing or, like, with this, I guarantee you pe- more people will use it now. Oh, shit, and, yeah, they're going to use it now. And you are you are going to have to be on your toe. Like, your cardio better be awesome because yep. that's not going to be a, a time for a, a little rest. No. Uh, and not just from Connor, but just uh, through, across the board in the UFC. Yeah, for everybody. So, and we, like, we are obviously uh, – amateurs at this we enjoy mma we enjoy the fights and whatnot but we 
we watch as many of the pay per views as we can, but the like weekday stuff and yeah, all we don't watch like, all of it all yeah. the time. Yeah, we're not as dialed in, and I, I'm never going to claim to be. Um, but but yeah, I'm, I'm very much a casual fan. But I like it. I yeah. like it a lot. The uh, it, Connor McGregor did look really crisp in this fight. Uh, the the kick to the face was yeah. perfect, and it, like it, if you're a fighter. Obviously, like we do watch a lot of these fights. Obviously, like we just said, we don't watch all of them. But it, when you are looking for something like that, you are looking for it to land. Per, that one could not have landed more perfectly. Uh, yeah. And it was it was just dead on. The timing was perfect. Everything about it was perfect. Um, the, one of the questions is, it, a lot of people have asked, like, should Cerrone retire after this? I mean, he's late 30s. He's been doing this forever. He's off of three straight losses now. But... When you go back and look at what his losses are, he lost to Tony Ferguson uh, by a doctor stoppage. He lost to uh, Justin Gaethje, um, and that was, you know, it, first round knockout. But or no, was that second round? I can't remember. Uh, either way, he got stopped in that one, but he just he got caught, and it is what it is. And then he got caught by McGregor, and it was a comeback for McGregor. So, you know, I don't think that he's done. Uh, he's still a lot of fun to watch. Uh, I'm curious what his next bout will be because he's he's one of those that they toss on these ESPN cards that they toss on, like the the free ones that you can actually watch, and he's still a lot of fun to watch. So I I don't think Cerrone's going anywhere. Do you agree with that? But I, I really don't know. I, I don't know. The, but here's the thing. I mean, if you want to get out there and you want to fight and you want to take these shots and you want to try to make some money, I'm not going to tell somebody they shouldn't or they couldn't. You know, I don't think that he's incapable. Like, there's some fighters that are incapable of being able to protect themselves. Yeah, I don't think that he's. No, I don't think he's that. I don't think he's that. Well, here's the thing: if he is that, you don't get that from the 40 seconds that you watched of this fight. That's the problem with this fight: is trying to judge too much off of it. When a guy gets caught the second the fight goes, I mean, Connor opens up with a haymaker and completely whiffs. Yeah, and then that's when they get tied up, and then he bloodies his nose with his shoulder. Yeah. And I don't know that anybody expected that. No. Damn sure Cowboy <laughs> didn't expect that. So he kind of rattles back. Then the next thing you know, he's got a foot directly to his jaw, and then it's, and then it's over. Yeah. It, it so, was, so what can you gain from that? He, it, he, made, he, made, he made him miss with the haymaker. It, it does. It, it led me, like I'll tell you this, I thought beforehand that I, I was kind of curious if this fight might have been kind of fixed. And obviously you don't want to talk about that in sports where integrity is a big part of it. But I thought beforehand, like, okay, well, they're, they're setting up McGregor because they, the UFC obviously needs him back. Like they need him competing uh, regularly. They need him for pay-per-view buys for just the sport in general because nobody else has been able to take that mantle, right? Like even Habib, who is significantly more famous because he beat McGregor. Uh, he, like, well, he's he, not more famous. It, no, he, he might be a famous. better fighter than McGregor. Well, I'm but saying he, he is sure not more famous than I'm McGregor. Saying, I'm saying he's more famous than he was. Like, he's he's a big name now because oh, of that. Okay. Nate Diaz, because he fought McGregor, is a bigger name now. That's uh, right. The, you know, you still have those things. you got Diaz and, and Masvidal. you got those kind of things. Um, the Okay, so let, let's talk about McGregor. Uh, the only fighter to score KOs at three different weight divisions, which is pretty awesome. The talk after the fight was McGregor could possibly headline UFC 248 in March. Now, I don't think that's going to happen now because uh, they've got Adesanya and, and somebody else. Or no, uh, Kamara Usman and uh, Romero, I think. Um, but which, I do think because he didn't take a lick, yeah. they're, they're going to push him to fight quick. Well, in... in you would say that, but Dana White came out afterwards, and because this gets into our big question of what is next for Conor McGregor, uh, Dana said Habib is the fight to make, and he believes that it would do more pay per views than it did the first time. He says that the first one did like three point three million, and most of the real numbers that are on different websites say it's like two point four. It, the truth is probably somewhere in the middle there, but. I don't know that it would do as many this time because there's just there won't be there can't be near the hype that yeah. there was because uh, the hype last time was just there was so much hate and it was exactly what you want for people wanting to watch a train wreck you know um, so there is the Habib aspect but if you do that Habib is fighting 
in April against Tony Ferguson. Yeah, if that's the case, then yeah, that that's gonna. But well, McGregor, I mean, but who's to say that McGregor can't fight before that fight? Also, well, that that's the thing. Dana wants McGregor to wait for Habib, but Habib, uh, because of his Islamic faith, doesn't fight over the summer. So he's not going to be back to fight until September, October. At that point, McGregor will have gone another nine months without fighting. And I don't think he wants to do that. So if you're going to do that, um, you you got to get into all of these other different ideas, right? Money Mayweather, Floyd Mayweather, posted a fake fight poster like right after the fight last night. And it was... Those two, and it was Mayweather McGregor 2 coming 2020. And Dana White did talk about Mayweather hitting him up constantly throughout the night last night, um, or on Saturday night. And if that were to be something, like my biggest question is, what, what does the casual fan want to watch? Because I don't know that the casual fan knew who Cowboy Cerrone was before last night. And by casual, the problem I mean, with MMA is the casual fan doesn't know who any of these guys are. Other than even, McGregor. Even yeah. Habib, the casual fan barely knows him. And they only know him because of all of the storyline leading up to the last one. That's right. That's it. And so if you are a casual fan, casual they, they fans, need to find a way to build another star. I don't know how to do that. I don't, I, so, I'm not in that business. So Jorge Masvidal had a gigantic 2019, right? Uh, he won the BMF belt uh, against Nate Diaz, and that was kind of a standalone thing, just who's the baddest mother out there. Um, but that that could be an interesting fight. Now, Masvidal did say back months and months ago that for Connor's comeback, like it wasn't going to be against Masvidal because UFC told him, nah, Connor can't handle you. Uh, we don't want to put him up against you. We want to put him up against somebody he can actually beat. So with him saying that kind of stuff, and then Dana coming out and saying, now, we'd like for Connor to wait and then us do Habib too. Like, that, that's what made me think of that. But it would be nice to see, you know, that whole thing. Uh, if you get Connor sticking around at welterweight or, or whatever, um, or, or however he would need to fight Kamara Usman. Um, now, Usman still has a fight before that. But that would be an interesting one. Um, I, I, <coughs> maybe it's Nate Diaz 3. Like at Connor, Connor McGregor and Nate Diaz three, like that could draw in some people because, again, casual fans didn't know who Nate Diaz was until he upset McGregor. Uh, if you are looking to spend money on a pay per view, and you don't watch UFC all the time, who, it, like, what is the fight that you want to see the most? I don't, I don't know the answer to that. I just know it's got Connor in it. I think that's the biggest thing. I think it doesn't matter who he fights. That's true right now. You can't ride that horse forever. No, no, that's true. Like they if, have if to continues, develop. Yeah, they have to develop the next guy. It, but is is the next guy Masvidal? Like Masvidal lost a lot early in his career, and yeah, he had a big year last year. But you know, he had that. Uh, he basically retired. Um, uh, ben Askin, um, like it, he knocked him out in what six seconds. I mean, he had that flying knee kick um, or the flying knee to his face that, like, knocked him out almost immediately. And that became, like, such a huge highlight. It, it went viral everywhere, all that. And then immediately after that, he knocks – well, technically knocks out uh, Nate Diaz for the BMF belt. Like, I, I guess if you were going to do that, if you were going to give him maybe Masvidal, uh, but the thing you got to be worried about is – Okay, if if Masvidal does destroy McGregor, does that make Masvidal really big, or does it just hurt your brand with McGregor? I don't. I mean, we've seen McGregor lose, and it didn't hurt his brand. He lost to Diaz, didn't hurt anything. He lost to Habib, didn't hurt anything. Yeah, but if he if he continues to lose, that's the question. Well, no, you don't want him to continue to lose. Yeah, you need to find some folks that he can beat between some of these fights. And that's the, like you. Well, and therein lies the issue. There is is if his next fight is either Nate or Habib or Masvidal, and he's you know going to be if worst case scenario even money or a dog in all of those fights, then you know I don't I don't know what you do. 
Yeah. I, you've I got do. to find a way, but but what I think is is you just have to find a way to boost those other guys. But the problem is is that to find somebody who has the skill and capability of fighting and has the personality to be a star is so hard and so unique. Yeah. Because some of the things that makes these guys great fighters are the fact that they were introverted their entire life and they weren't, you know, big you know, spotlight guys. And that's why they got into martial arts. And that's why they got into fighting is, is because, you know, it was kind of a, 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 a what, what the word I'm looking for? Um, just like a self-defense thing of not, not necessarily defending yourself, but just trying to find a place where you fit in. And, yeah. and those aren't the qualities of somebody like Connor. That's just a star. And I think we live in a world today to where if you want to be a star and you want to be famous, you're not getting into a sport where you go get punched in the face all the time. No, that's you're, and, you're and very so right the people that. that make the best fighters don't have the personality to be marketable stars. Yeah, yeah that's true. That's true. Um, it, I and think, that's a generalization. That doesn't mean that we won't find another one. And ha ha, see this guy's amazing, and you were wrong. Yeah there's just there's a reason that it always struggles to find them yeah like you can I mean, have Chuck really Liddell good was a unique situation yeah. Conor McGregor's a unique situation you you can have fantastic fighters that aren't showmen like that's, yes. that's just how it is uh I think most of the fantastic fighters aren't showmen true and Very the guys true. that want to look good and be showy don't last because they get their ass kicked yeah, uh, Habib uh, Nurmagomedov Madoff is not a no. showman whatsoever no. No, like, not at all. He does not care about the press conferences. He does not care about that aspect of this at all. Nope. Um, he is he he fights because he wants to fight. Nate Period. Diaz seemed like he tried to go jar for jar with with Connor before their first fight, and and he and he he'll kinda, still talk smack to anybody like he he does that, but it's it's not to the level. No. So it it's not he's not doing it. To when it was fight. entertaining, like it yeah. looked forced and it looked awkward and it looked like a guy that was trying to be something he's not. Yeah, I agree. I agree with you. I think back to what should be next for McGregor. If Dana White is serious about making uh, McGregor Habib two, uh, and and you need McGregor to do something in the meantime, uh, your best bet is going to be put him in the boxing ring again. Like put yeah, but then he's going to lose again. So then which, you're going to watch him lose on on you know a big monster I, pay per view that's going to make you know. And I, I don't think that's going to affect him at all if, when it's against a guy that is undefeated, um, like Mayweather is. Okay, you know now Habib still has to get through Tony Ferguson. They've they've tried to make this fight happen uh, four times before this, and it, obviously once we get into April, we're, we're going to start trying to get some interviews with uh, with some guys that cover MMA. Um, but you know, Habib Ferguson has, has been scheduled four times and those two guys have each dropped out twice due to injury. You know, there was a weight cut problem. There was a, a torn ACL. There was, you know, this and that, like all, all kind of different stuff has gone wrong. This fight has seemed cursed forever. Um, and it's, it's now a big time fight because of what these guys have done in the meantime, but uh, we'll we'll see if this fight actually happens or not. I, I think I think the Mayweather thing, like it doesn't matter if you win or lose, it's going to bring in a ton of money. It's going to keep. Oh, it's going to be so boring though. I think. Yeah. I think if you get that many people to buy in a second time, and it's awful to watch again. The first one wasn't awful though. Yes, it was. I, I didn't yes, think it, was, it was. Gary, you come on now. Oh, yes, it, was a, it, was. it was a complete sham. But I like I enjoyed it. It was entertaining. The first three rounds were entertaining, and then Connor ran out of gas, and they just chased each other around the ring. Yeah, no, you're right about they that. They literally like walked around in a circle and looked at each other for for nine rounds. Yeah, yeah. That's I mean, true. it was unbearable to watch after the first three rounds. Yeah, after the first three, the next seven were kind of eh, whatever. And you you saw a few things from McGregor that you know made you think he might have had a chance, but. So here's another thing Dana's got a problem with is he had a star, a mega star, one that is every bit as big or as good as Connor um, in um, John Bones Jones. But that guy just continuously just can't stay off the cocaine and the steroids. 
Well, and it, so it didn't matter how many fights he won. They they immediately became DQ'd as soon as it was over because I hey piss in this as soon as the fight's over. Oh yeah, you're 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 taking horse tranquilizers. <laughs> he uh now I will say I'll, I'll give Bones Jones some credit here. He has stayed clean for like a year and a half now. <laughs> for a year and a half. he's been in the league for like fifteen years. I know, I know, but it, he was he was uh, uh, suspended for like two years. And when I he think came the back, only reason he's been he clean fine. is because he hasn't fought enough to be tested. Uh, but that's the thing. He has fought a ton. He's fought like four times in the last year and a half. And that's a lot for a, a big-time UFC fighter. So, uh, you know, the issue is he came back, and there are still the people that doubt whether or not he's really clean. There are the people that... Well, yeah, uh, nobody will fight him. Well, nobody will fight him. And on top of that, like, he's... I think maybe he's fighting a little too much against people that... Uh, People really, people really don't know some of these guys, you know. Yeah. So the pay per view buys are okay, but they're not great. And so well, he, that's he's what not Connor's going to end up being, though. At the end of his career, that's just what it's going to be. It's going to be a bunch of no name guys yeah. trying to make their name off of maybe beating him, and he's just going to rack up a ton of easy wins at the end of his career. But I, I'm curious if Dana will will let him get to that point because I like Dana is right. The biggest fight that that UFC could make would be McGregor and Habib, if Habib ends up winning this fight against Ferguson. Like that would be a massive, massive fight. But like, how how big is it? And would Conor actually have a chance in that game, in, like, in that match? I I just I don't know. So. Uh, we'll have a lot to discuss, of course, going forward in the fight stuff because uh, in the NFL or NFL and college football offseason, uh, we're going to be talking about boxing. We're going to be talking about uh, all, all kinds of different things. Thanks for checking out Winning Cures Everything. If you want to keep up with us, hit subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. Visit the website at winningcureseverything.com or you can like us on Facebook or follow us at Winning Cures, at Gary WCE, or at Chris B. Giannini on Twitter. Share out the show, leave a nice review, and make sure to comment and tweet at us.